Wātea Fifth Estate is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union. Kia ora Aotearoa, welcome to Wātea Fifth Estate where we wrap the most important news events with the best political panel on television. Joining us tonight to discuss the reality of homelessness versus the rhetoric of the politicians in studio. Former homeless person who now works with rough sleepers, Daryl Mihare, Chief Executive of Homelessness, homelessness Charity, Moira Lawler. Child Poverty Action Group spokesperson on housing, Frank Hogan. Former homeless person and now head of the Island Child Charitable Trust, Danielle Bergen. And on the phone, live on the street, we have Rangi who is homeless. Kia ora Rangi, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us, panel. Remember, viewers, you can send in questions and thoughts for tonight's show off the watianews.com and the dailyblog.nz platforms, or you can email us on watia5e at watia603am.co.nz. Tonight's guest Twitter commentator is activist Miss Betsy Trotwood. Follow her tonight using the hashtag Watia Fifth Estate. Let's get on with the show. For the last two weeks, National Party ministers have been saying lots about the homeless. The Prime Minister says they can just get help for wins. The Finance Minister says there is no housing crisis. The Social Housing Minister promises 3,000 ghost beds that didn't exist. And just yesterday, the Housing Minister was claiming the spike in homelessness was a figment of the imagination. So we decided here on White Here for the State to talk to those who are homeless, were homeless and those who work with the homeless to see how close the politician's rhetoric match the reality. Moira, the housing minister, says any suggestion there is a spike in homelessness is a figment of your imagination. Are you delusional or is the minister delusional? I'd like to be delusional, but unfortunately we have growing numbers of people seeking help in our service and we're just aware of so many people out there that get nowhere near our service because we just don't have capacity to work with them. And it's not just us, I mean we're people who work in the field, but you talk to anyone, you talk to anyone who works, walks through their shopping centre, you talk to retailers, you talk to people who use parks, you know, homelessness is a growing issue. What does it say when the housing minister writes off the concerns of agencies like yours with the flippancy that he has? I think it's, it's because the government understands that this is a much bigger issue. You know, if you could say this is just about homelessness, and, you know, even if you can use the just word, then maybe you could think of it as a charity issue. But actually, this is about housing. This yeah. is about the way in which we ensure that people can live in affordable housing, and that's a big structural issue. So they're scared to acknowledge that it's there. Daryl, what led to you being homeless? Um, what led to myself? Um, well, it was a breakdown in a relationship, and, you yeah. know, I'm not from Auckland myself, and I just yeah. decided to walk away from that life. Yep. Um, you know, I've always worked and stuff, and I relocated to Auckland here, and, and uh, you know, I kind of thought that, um, um, you know, I could engage with some services that, and that they'll support me, yep. and, 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 you know, like, um, they have obligations that you need to meet and stuff, yep. and I yep. struggled with those. and. Yep. And, and because, like I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not used to rough, wasn't used to rough sleeping, yep. um, that became all too much. And then I had to deal with the day-to-day -day struggle of just getting used to being homeless and yep. where I'm going to eat, shower, sure, 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 clothing sure. and that sort of stuff. And, and how do you deal with that emotionally? Oh, you just deal with it on, on a day-to-day -day basis and it's, it's a real struggle, eh? You know, like, it's a real struggle. How do you feel when you hear John Key state that going to wins... Um, would solve homeless, homelessness. So, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm working now as a support worker at LifeWise under yep. Moira's leadership. Yep. Um, you know, like, so I've got first-hand knowledge. Those are the people yeah, yeah, we're yeah, dealing yeah. with. And, yeah. and, and, you know, those people don't have IDs and stuff. They want to get on benefits. Because, to, obviously, to access housing, you've sure, got to be able to pay sure. for that housing. And um, the, the housing market, whether it's emergency accommodation, transitional temporary accommodation, or a social housing in the private sector permanent is yeah, yeah. really it's a real struggle just to compete so if you're a homeless person that's looking a bit weathered or whatever and, and you're stigmatized whatever yep. marginalized you know you're going to yep. struggle competing in that market and so, we so see those people on a day-to-day -day basis so when the prime minister says look you can just pop into wins the reality for you and the people that you're oh, working is, with is that, that's just is, that's, that's impossible that's i mean impossible. I, we deal with working income yep um regular yep. and that sort of stuff and yeah it's and you it's know not, the problems firsthand oh the, 
well, you know, you've got to have ID and all this other stuff. You might have to access a GP to get a med cert yep. or something to yep. get, actually get on a benefit. Yep. You don't have those things, and those services cost money. Right. Um, and you're homeless with nothing. Um, sure. How, how are you supposed to put, yeah, get, yeah. work through that? that? Danielle... Kind of, kind of got to jump through hoops. You wrote a very moving piece for Radio New Zealand this week outlining your experience of homelessness. And if I could just quote you. Becoming a mother helped me gain a housing New Zealand home 13 years ago. I proved I was traumatised from a sexual assault. I proved I had a newborn baby. I cried in the HNZ office and within days I had an offer of a warm, dry home. That was 13 years ago and it sounds incredibly traumatic experience then. But are the conditions worse now than when they were then? I think there's a lot more barriers what are and, they? Yep. Well, the barriers are is that you can't just go to Housing New Zealand to get a state house. So you're now having to go through work and income. Uh -huh. There's call centres that's in itself got huge barriers. Yep. There's um, problems going into work and income. There's paperwork getting lost. They're scanning things. Um, there's people getting dropped off the waiting list just because mm. the computer rings their cell phone three times and if their cell phone's flat, they're homeless sleeping in their car, they get dropped off the You're waiting joking. list by a computer. You're I'm joking. telling you, Martin, it's got so serious. There are so many injustices now towards the poor, the impoverished, the homeless, and it comes down to a computer actually selecting whether you get a house offer or not. So hold, hold on, but, 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 so you're saying that if they call you three times yep. on your phone and you don't answer, or for whatever reason, yes. you, you, you don't get back to them, they drop you off the list. Well, that is what we've, we're getting advised. That's what we've been advised well, in how is, from how, MSD meetings. How, sorry, how, how does that help the most vulnerable amongst us if you've got that kind and, of and it draconian... Takes, it takes time to get people back on the list. And I've had girls who, you know, with toddlers, have couch surfed all around Auckland, moving houses every two to three nights with to a little toddler she thought she was on the waiting list and I get her, I, I manage to become her agent, yeah. I call work and income, I find out what's going on with this mum's application and the, the young woman wasn't even on the list for 12 months. Driving around Auckland waiting, she was actually trying to hold down a part-time job and she was working poor and she was not even on the list and she thought she was. Rangi, um, thank you for joining us. You're, you're, you're homeless right now. The, 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 the minister, um, Paula Bennett, has just come out with a policy today saying that she's prepared to give people who are homeless in, in, in Auckland $5,000 to move out and live in Ashburton. Is that the sort of thing that you need, Rangi? Is, is that the sort of offer of help from the government, a one-way ticket out to Ashburton? Well, for myself personally, I'm single, so I don't have a lot of problems that um, these homeless people and ca families and cars have. Yep. And and for a start, that when John Key said that people just should just go to Wins, they were, the subject was actually not just any homeless. The subject that day was working homeless and cars, and working homeless cannot go to Wins because they already have income. Right. And he should have known that. Right. So what do you what do you feel as someone who is homeless right now, Rangi? When you hear our politicians say that you know you could get help from wins, there isn't really a crisis. Uh, it's a figment of our imagination. What does you, your experience? How does that line up against what the politicians are telling us? Well, the word that, there's only there's one word that comes to straight to the front of my mind that but it's the tool of the corporates and the politicians, and that's trivialising, they trivialise everything, they try to get away with as much as possible by making problems sound trivialised that are real problems and that are not problems to them. And this is, a, I, I really believe this is a real um, old fashioned tool that people are seeing through now and uh, it's, it's not good enough, um, it's not a good enough word or uh, a tool for politicians to use anymore because people know what they're doing. People are educated, the middle class is starting to feel the brunt now. And the more the middle class hurts, that the more they're going to fight back. And then um, it just it just seems to me that the government has um, become arrogant over the years of and, and feeling confident that they're going to get back in again next year. Uh, as for myself, I'm, I'm involved in... Um, I've got a degree, I'm a published author, of, I'm involved in several huge initiatives with the City Council and the uh, Auckland City Mission. Yep. And employers should take me very seriously and... Uh, I should be getting paid for what I do. I spend a lot of time um, in, in meetings and talking with um, high-profile people 
and our employers would should be looking at me and saying, man, when we like to just cut of your job, you should be working for us. Uh, Rangi, thank you for your thoughts. A lot of wisdom there. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Frank, what does it tell you when the Minister of Social Housing spends 3,000 beds as extra funding for the homeless when it actually turns out not to be true at all? Are the government more keen to look like they are solving the problem than actually solve the problem? I believe so. What we have here, it appears, is ministers scrambling around, not communicating with each other, disconnect between the Prime Minister and his Housing Minister and, 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 and the like. So far as the Prime Minister's uh, comment a week or so ago, which really sparked this yeah, avalanche yeah, yeah, of evidence yeah, yeah, that's yeah, come yeah, forward, yeah. there's two, po two possible responses that Child Poverty Action Group says. Either the Prime Minister is genuine, he had been misinformed up until this point, uh -huh. or he's faking his response. Right. The tail end of his response where he said, if wins couldn't respond, we would find it unacceptable. This is not the New Zealand we want. With that sentiment, all right-thinking people in New Zealand and compassionate people can agree. Yep. It's the front end of his comment indicating that he, he believed it could be solved in an instant, as yeah, it yeah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, is, yeah. is, which is questionable. Either he's misinformed or he's naive. Do we have real problem today? We just saw Paula Bennett offer this five thousand dollar deal. If you move out of Auckland, here's five grand. Go live in Ashburton. Bill English wasn't even aware that she had made that call today in Parliament. And when questioned on it, sort of, I don't know anything about it. Is this, is this a government well, in absolute disarray now on well, housing? This certainly lends weight to my to the point I'm making about the disconnect, the lack of. Uh, the scrambled nature of the response, yeah, that there yeah. is real pressure now on those people. Up until now, essentially, we've been concentrating about interest rates and housing yep. prices in New Zealand. But in the last 10 days or two weeks, what has New Zealand has become aware of is essentially the, the have-nots, the yes. real people at the, yeah. at the struggling end yeah. of our society and, and how they have been squeezed and squashed by success. Do you policies. think it was a surprise for a lot of New Zealanders when they saw those images of other New Zealanders living in cars that they just they, that, that, well, that there was something a, a, a disconnect between the reality it, and what they thought the reality was because that because those images really shook people, didn't they? Sure, and but it, it, it is the reality of what, what what's been going on and and at, at the coalface yeah. and I think in the last ten days or so that the the, the the scab has been taken off yep. the wound and we're yep. seeing the reality yeah. of, 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 of what's, what's going on out there. Moira, um, charging people who are poor $80,000, $70,000, $60,000 for a motel debt, it, 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 it's, it seems ludicrous that that's social policy. How, how disconnected from fairness... From, from the values of egalitarianism, is it making people pay that debt? That's just outrageous, isn't and it? And when you hear the minister concede that they don't have a process to even identify how much they're spending, so they know that's got completely out of hand. You know, you have moteliers who are charging more than they would charge anyone else for right, the same exactly. night in the yes, motel, yeah, so there's yeah. that issue. Yeah. <coughs> and there's the issue of... You know, people aren't stupid. People understand that they're taking on a debt that they won't be able to pay back. So what you see is a lot of women and children who have absolutely no choice because right. they're determined to house their children. Right. But there are others who don't have that responsibility of children that are choosing to stay on the street rather than take on that debt yeah, yeah, because yeah, their that, logic tells them that's a better idea. And, and how, 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 how counterproductive exactly. to the entire process is exactly. it to say, go to Wins, Wins puts you up in a motel, you walk out of that, what, a couple of months later with a $60,000 debt? That you will how never are you ever going to pay that back? That you will never recover from. Daryl, the rough sleepers that you work with, the ones on the street right now, what do they need? What do they need right now? Oh, what do they need? Well, they need access to um, ha uh, housing, stable housing. Yeah. Um, they need to be able to, like, um, access support services um, without being stigmatised and get their their entitlements met. Yeah. Um, and do you yeah. see hope? Do I see hope? Um, well, I like to think that we provide hope because we're working with those people that that no one else, you know, yeah. like they've, they've tried to access support services elsewhere and, and, and those people, you know, then they've just gotten on with uh, maybe just 
just staying homeless, I guess, yep. in a way, because yep. yep. it's like they've got nowhere else to go, and mm. so we try and offer them along to better outcomes. Danielle, why, why did you provide, and why do you provide temporary shelter the way you do? Why, why do you do that? Because it works. Because there's a need. Yep. And because I know that I can have amazing outcomes. And because I just love seeing people come from desperation yep. to uh, being rehomed and getting back smiles and happiness. Yeah. But I do want to point out to you, Martin, that my budget yearly from Ministry of Social Development to run the only little homeless shelter in East Auckland is $200 a week. So while Paula Bennett and Anne Tolly, Minister Tolly, are funding thousands of dollars to motels, little sucker Danielle Bergen, who's a kind-hearted former homeless woman who can relate and has the skills and the compassion to help families in need, yeah. can't even draw a decent wage to feed her kids. That so is, that's that what this government's doing, Martin, and we need, we just need to keep awakening New Zealanders. Imagine what I could do with 60000 that she's funded a motel for one woman and children. Well, that's right. I mean, imagine, one it, extra, yeah. imagine one extra homeless worker in, in Greater Auckland City in the suburban streets, stopping at the parks, helping people in their cars at night. Yeah. You know, well, the, I think that's a really fundamental question. We're, we're drip-feeding resources into all of these parts of the system instead of providing income that keeps families well and that's yeah. the kind of CPAG issue like yeah. when are we going to start looking at what it actually costs to have families live well yeah. and making sure that there is an actual safety net. And Martin could we just fund the people working at the coalface mm. who were there actually proven that they're working at the coalface. It worries me. Yes she's tagged 41 million in the budget coming out tomorrow yep. but who's it going to go to? Yeah, is it yeah. going to go to a new centralised sort of system? People who aren't even uh, aren't even mixing and, and able to relate to the homeless. So what do you think in terms of the solutions, if we're focusing on some solutions right now, if the government were genuine about mm. wanting to help the homeless, what would they be doing? They'd be supporting those at the coalface immediately. At, currently, they want us to go to a request for proposal, which is a government tender. So if we want any part of that 41 million, we've got to spend days and days in our office typing up reports to try and submit a Tender. Now that government tender is for the open slather for, for many, many organisations to apply to who aren't already working with the homeless. So there's lots of fronts. I mean, I could sit here, you know, for your whole show and tell you tell you how to resolve it. But um, they have clogged by taking the assessments from Housing New Zealand to work and income. Yeah. They have totally clogged the emergency housing systems. Mm -hmm. People working amongst the homeless cannot get rooms for mothers and children or, or families and children or even single people anymore. Instead of me turning over 25 whānau a year yeah. from desperation, bringing them into warm, safe shelter and rehoming them, I've been reduced to maybe getting six to ten state houses a year, so I can only do eight families a year. I'm, I'm happy to do 20. I'm happy yeah. to do 30. Yeah. Years yeah. before, I used to do yeah. 35. Yeah. So why clog the system? Unclog the exits, get people into homes, rent and lease private rentals if you have to as the government. So why, for, for, why aren't we seeing this? Why aren't we seeing real movement on this issue? Well, I, I think essentially that the government has the agenda of downsizing social housing, getting yeah. out of it, sell, selling down. Can I illustrate to you what's happening, say, in South Auckland? I went to a home last week that had <coughs> recently been sold. It has now compartmentalised into five renting units, five rooms, each offering accommodation to an individual or a family, yeah. drawing 260 to 280 per room, do the maths, that's $1,300 per week that the landlord stands to get wow. from a home that had been owned originally by a family. Yep. And this is an illustration of the, of the uh, de-home ownership that's occurring with individuals. Yeah. So a speculator buys yeah. and they either keep it vacant and make a, a heap out of the escalating and skyrocketing uh, prices so they, yep. they have nothing in it or they get people in yep. on a room-by-room -room basis and earn something like $1,300 on an investment that's, quickly, that's uh, something like sixty to $80,000 sure. per annum sure. by way of income yep. on, a, on a purchase of maybe 500000 Now, that has, that, that's 
both taken a, away a home yep. from a family and created a slumlord. You got it. And um, Arangi, are you still there? What do you think the politicians need to know about homelessness? Well, I think you should be open to uh, people in the community with, uh, who, who are um, working on these agendas. But I can tell you what is, has encouraged me uh, lately. I've been um, uh, invited onto a task force yep. with the um, Ministry of Social Development. At first, I was a bit iffy about it because I was very um, worried that they didn't really mean any business. But... Then I read uh, media reports that um, leaders of uh, um, MSD had um, fronted John Key and told him they're not happy with his attitude at all. So that made me uh, go wholeheartedly into this um, with a um, wider um, um, perspective. Yep. Um, just to, I'm just going to do a quick uh, round with everyone in terms of solution bases right now. Uh, Daryl, what, 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 what do we need to do to actually end homelessness in New Zealand? What do we need to do? Oh, just provide better services um, and, and obviously provide housing, which is a real struggle, especially yeah, yeah. here in Auckland. Um, Do you think that we've given up in some part on, 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 on the homeless? Well, I think with the homeless people, they're very marginalised. I mean, yeah. I've, I've been offered a couple of housing, I've supported clients into housing, social housing, um, and, and like Danny says, uh, you know, I, I got told, oh, you need to make contact with this person within 24 hours, and that's just this week. Right. Um, this guy's like well, 70, they just cut you 75 off. years old and hasn't had a hel house in 30 years. And well, they were going to hand it on to the next person. Right. Um, and I thought that was really tough. It sounds like there's a lack of empathy there for mm. the people they're supposed to be looking after. Yeah. Daniel, what do we need to do to actually end homelessness in New Zealand? Definitely need more homes. We need them fast. And uh, government needs to start listening to frontline people cut down the barriers, cut down the bureaucracy, uh, start working with solutions. And I think this government needs to learn, the su learn keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moira, what do we need to do? Because you, 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 LifeWise has done some amazing work yes. on actually bringing out people to New Zealand to explain, well, the way you solve homelessness is you build homes. I mean, yes. as crazy as it is, and that you know it's, what it's as simple as that. Is, if you want to end homelessness, you have to choose to do it. Yeah. It actually yeah. is as simple as that. You have to choose to be a society that doesn't have homelessness, and actually then it all unrolls from there. So do you think it's a lack of uh, political courage? Absolutely. I think we're filled with this notion of the deserving and the undeserving. Oh, she yep. was in a house with pee. Oh, they drink too yep. much. Oh, yep. We've got to get yep. rid of all of that and understand that housing's a human right. This pee business has been a very clever way yes. of demonising yes. people who are in state Blame homes and, and, and demonising yes. um, uh, uh, the homeless. I, I've checked with all the scientific stats um, uh, it, and it shows that it's very easy to pick up uh, or get a, a, a positive test if someone has smoked the stuff in a house. Yes. You're not going to know who has. Uh, in terms of the, the toxicity, as long as you haven't been making the stuff in the house, in terms of the toxicity, it is, is, isn't that toxic, but you'll get a, a, an easy positive anywhere. And then the, 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 the policy is to throw people out and not let them in for a year? Stand them down for 12 months, and I think the jury is out <coughs> on the risks of pee. As you say, unless you're baking in the house. Yeah, if yeah, someone's yeah, yeah, used yeah, yeah, in the that's, house, that's we're right. still and, and, not and, and, and I'm certainly no, not pro-pee. I think it's a terrible drug. Exactly. But if you, if, if you actually look at the science, if someone has had a smoke or something, and yes. you'll get a very easy test yes. on that... And we, it's easy to focus on that because you can blame the tenant, yeah. whereas they can be living in a house riddled with black mould. That's right. And we don't think that's a problem. That's right, that's so right. what are we saying? So are we, we're just using the pee as a, as a, we, uh, as a way to I bash them, right? I think it's part of a depiction of these people as other, as undeserving, as making bad choices. You know, what I heard the Prime Minister say on the radio this morning is, you need to remember that we support people who work hard and save and look after their families. Yeah. That's the message. Yeah. These people don't deserve our help. And so we just let them rot, do we? So it's up to us to say, that's not good enough. We're not putting up with that. Frank, what do we need to do? What do we need to do to actually end homelessness in New Zealand? There needs to be a response on a number of tiers. But essentially, the there has to be a commitment yep. from the government. Yep. They have they have the, le the hands on the levers of power. Yep. There has to be a vision. There has to be a multifaceted plan and that's what I would be hopeful tomorrow at least the Prime Minister is good to his word that yep. he presents as a person of honour he has said it is unacceptable to, that we have the situation as outlined by our guests now it is the challenge for the, the Prime Minister and his ministers 
to put forward a program that addresses at, at all levels those issues that we've uh, yeah. been discussing. Rangi, um, what do we need to do to stop homelessness? Well, we've got to, um, when we get interviewed by the media, we've got to make sure they are reporting on the positive aspects of what homeless are doing in the community yep. instead of them uh, looking down Queen Street and looking at beggars on Queen Street. They've got to know that people are doing things so that the public understand there is a positive work being done in the homeless community. Good point. Thank you so much for that, Rangi. Uh, we have to wrap the show, but before we go, we'll do a quick final word with our panellists. How out of touch are our government ministers with the realities of homelessness? Moira, how out of touch are they? I think they know a lot more than they care to let on because mm. once you know something, you've got to, you've got to act. Danielle? They're playing Monopoly. A, bo a game board of Monopoly with people's lives. Daryl? Oh, get out. Get, you know, those ministers should get like out there, not on Queen Street, but into like like and look at the substandard the way the homeless live which is terrible under bridges and yeah. at the domain in the bushes and yeah. it's real you know i've seen it yeah first time uh, Rangi, um uh, how, how out of touch of the government i didn't say that again how out of touch of the government oh the government has agendas they don't have common sense until <laughs> the public wakes up wakes up the government agendas then they'll realize that the government is purposely out of touch frank well it's a saddest state if or a saddest indictment on our society if we cannot care for the most vulnerable. Yeah. Our children, if they are not given that safe, secure home, that start that all of us have had the benefit of, including the Prime Minister in his yes. earliest days, yes. Yes. if we don't have that type of home environment replicated and offered to our youngest, we are going to pay as a nation. Thank you, panel, and to my final word for the last two weeks. We have he heard our government tell us there is no housing crisis, that the homeless are a figment of our imagination, and that all they need to do is see wins. An agency currently in the spotlight for raking up tens of thousands of dollars in motel debt for those homeless people who seek help from them. The famous writer Herman Melville once wrote, Of all the preposterous assumptions of humanity over humanity, nothing exceeds most of the criticisms made on the habits of the poor by the well-housed, well-warmed and well-fed. Listening to our ministers glibly gloss over the human suffering of poverty this week has proven Herman very right. Thank you, panellists. Thank you, for Farno for watching. We'll join you again tomorrow night, 7pm, for Wātia Fifth Estate's budget special, where we will be talking to all sectors of the community to find out what the budget means for you and the wider nation. Kia ora and good night. Wātea Fifth Estate is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union. 